Hey, Dave James here, and I'm here to do an install video. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did an unboxing of a Cooler Master Master Air Maker 8. Uh, well, this right here. I did an unboxing of this. If you want to see that video, look down in the description, and I'll link it down there. Also, at the end of this video, I'll also have it there as well. So anyways, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install that onto a motherboard. So stay tuned. Hey, Dave James here. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to show you how to install that right there into a motherboard. So let's go ahead and go to my workstation so I can show you how to do that. Okay, first we're going to go ahead and get our motherboard and take it out of the box. And then we're going to take the motherboard out of the anti-static bag. Doing what I just done there is not necessary, but if you want to do it, that's fine. I normally like to set my motherboard on top of the anti-static bag. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take out all the parts that's in the box. I did an unboxing for this video, as I said before. If you want to see that, just go down to the link in the description and click on that. It'll take you to the unboxing. But then come back to this video so you know how to put it together. Okay, doing heat sinks, uh, whenever they get newer and stuff like that, you need to read directions to learn how to, you know, install them correctly. And I, too, am going to have to read directions as well because this is my first time installing it as well. But I have installed plenty of heat sinks before, so I do have some experience in that area. Okay, the first thing you need to do, find a back plate here, and then you got to adjust the screws. And you got to adjust the screws depending on what kind of CPU socket you have. To know how to adjust it, all you have to do is just look at the directions and it'll tell you where to adjust the screws at. Okay, up next we're going to go ahead and put the back plate on the back side of the motherboard, as you can see right here. Then you're going to go ahead and set the motherboard down. As you're going to see here, having this motherboard sitting on this box came in handy. I was able to slide the motherboard a little bit to keep the bracket on the back of the motherboard. Okay, one thing cool about this is that it's universal, so you can use it on AMD or Intel. So you might be asking yourself, which screw do I use? Well, Cooler Master made that pretty simple for you. On the packaging here, you're going to see a letter for each row of screws. Although you might have a little bit of trouble seeing it on the camera here because where the package is so clear. But if you look closely, you can see it. Up next, grab your directions here. And on the directions, you can see each part has a letter on them. As you can see here, different Intel sockets will use different screws. So they will have different letters. Once you find the correct screw, all you have to do is just screw it onto the pegs. Up next, we got this bracket right here. Now, you need to make sure that you are putting it on correctly. As you can see, this middle piece right here, this right here needs to go up. But oh, wait a minute, it also got to be facing the correct way, and this is the correct way to face it. Now, of course, the other side is going to be facing the other way, if I can do this without dropping it. By the way, this bracket is the G bracket. Also, the position of this bracket depends on which Intel socket you have. In my case, my socket is 1150, so mine will be in the middle. Up next, we're going to be putting the part L and screwing those onto the pegs. Okay, up next, we're going to go ahead and take the CPU fans off. And you can do that by pressing here and here and then sliding them up. Now, when I made this video, I had a heck of a time getting them to slide off. So apparently when I did the unboxing, I didn't quite put them on there correctly. So, uh, but I did eventually get them off of there. Okay, up next, you wanna go ahead and put your processor paste on there. I might suggest, uh, instead of going with the one that they give you, is going with Arctic Civil 5, which in my opinion, is one of the best ones. There's a couple other really good ones too, but Arctic Civil 5, I think is the best. There's a few different ways that you can apply a thermal paste on there. It just depends on how you want to do. There's a P method, there's a line, there's an X. There's also a way to spread it on there. It just depends on how you want to do it. 
Whatever you do, do not put too much on it. Actually here, I think I might actually put a little too much on it, but I end up getting a card and scraping some of that off, and then I end up spreading it around a little bit, because that's the method I like using. Okay, up next, we're going to go ahead and peel off the little sticker that's on the bottom of it. Okay, I forgot to turn the camera back on, but off camera, I end up taking some alcohol wipes and cleaning it real good, and then also letting it dry a little bit. And as you can see right here, I end up putting the CP on. I was being really careful with it, not moving around too much and make sure it lined up with the holes. Okay, the next part you're gonna need is the letter M. Okay, for this next part, I suggest you get a screwdriver that has a magnet on it. I'm using an electric screwdriver here, but believe me, I'm being very, very careful. I'm just getting it to actually go on there and stuff like that, but I'm using a regular screwdriver to actually tighten it. I end up stopping the camera so you didn't see me put the other one in. Here you're going to see that I'm going ahead and putting the ram sticks in. Okay, now once we got our ram sticks in, we can go ahead and put the fan on. Oh man, you know what? After all this trouble, I just realized something. My ram sticks are too big. It's not going to go. That fan is too big. Well, I guess we're going to have to try something else. Don't worry, I did have an extra fan setting around. It was a smaller fan and I went ahead and replaced that big fan with a smaller fan and that's what you're gonna have to do. Either that or you get some low profile memory sticks. I didn't wanna waste the money on buying new memory sticks so I used an extra fan. Something else too, I forgot to have the camera recording whenever I was putting on the new fan. Luckily, Cooler Master, they have an adapter so that you could put a smaller fan on there. So I went ahead and put the adapter onto a, a smaller fan. And it's just a generic Cooler Master fan. And it doesn't have to be Cooler Master, it can be any other brand. But luckily, I had a Cooler Master so it'll actually match a little bit. As you can see, there's a significant difference in size between the regular fan and this fan. Also, with the fan I replaced it with, it doesn't have any lights on it. So, eventually I need to buy me one that has some red LEDs on it. Even though you have a smaller fan, you're still going to have a little bit of a lift. But it's not going to be as bad as if you left the big fan on there. Also, with the big fan, it wouldn't have clipped in, in place. With the smaller one, it will clip in place. Now, if you want to go ahead and make the other one the same size and get a smaller fan for the other side, you can. Cooler Master got brackets for that. But I'm not going to do that. I want my other fan to be big on that side, so I'm just going to leave it on there. Okay, now this part right here, this actually plugs both of your fans in and also the LED light that's in front of the uh, CPU cooler. So you'll have to have all those plugged in whenever you install it. Now, in my opinion, I think it's probably best for you to go ahead and plug that directly into your fan controller so that it's easier to control with. But if not, plugging it in your motherboard would be fine. Okay, with using my cell phone, I went ahead and recorded the finished product here. And right there, as you can see, the red LED fan. How's that lit up nice and pretty? This is like sexy. Really loving it. As you can see, the other fan is not an LED fan. But some light's kind of coming through a little bit. Eventually, I'm going to go ahead, like I said before, and get a red LED fan over there. But all in all, I'd say it looks pretty good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the temperatures here. Not too bad. Not too bad. Right now, it has 24 on attempts. Uh, see, motherboard's 28. But that CPU down to 24, wow, that's really good for the temperature. Now, depending on what room you're in, it also depends on the temperature. It's kind of cool up here in the studio. But when I put it in my computer room, the temperature did go up a little bit. It went up to like 35, between 35 and 40. Uh, it kind of fluctuated. Well, actually between 35 and 45. So it kind of fluctuated there. Now, as I'm currently editing this video, it, it is up to 43, but that might be because where I'm actually editing this video. 
Okay, let's go ahead and do a stress test to this so that we can test out the temperatures. I'm going to go ahead and use a program called Firestrike. Some of you guys might have already heard of it. Firestrike is by a company named 3D Mark. 3D Mark is a bench testing software program. You should always run this program whenever you are adding new hardware to your computer. Let's say like a CPU cooler or a GPU or a power supply or something like that or even a, uh, another motherboard. You should always run this just to see if everything's working okay. I ran this program and here's the results. The only thing we're going to concentrate on is the CPU temperatures. As you can see by this chart right here, the highest the temperature got was 55. And the lowest it got was 47. And it seemed like it pretty much stayed in that range. All in all, these are pretty good temperatures and I'm very happy with this CPU cooler. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want to know whenever I release new videos, go ahead and click that bell icon beside the subscribe button. Anyways, that's it for this video. Until next time, peace out. <music>